In today's video we will be working with the Van Healy model and we're going to figure out how to support and differentiate for students on different levels of the Van Healy model. So before we start with that I'm going to explain the Van Healy model and the different levels and a couple other important characteristics that go along with that. I have the levels written here on a paper. So the Van Healy model, the first level is zero and that's visualization. And in this level students are able to say what things look like is a very common term used for students explaining something if they're on level zero. So something a student could say if they're a level zero in the Van Healy model would be a circle looks like a pizza because they're associating the visual with what they know. Level one is analysis and this is when we move more into looking at characteristics of figures and their properties but not too in depth and not necessarily correctly so an example of something a student could say during level one analysis would be a square has four equal sides and four equal angles or a square is not a rectangle because a rectangle has two long sides and two short sides and that second example although incorrect um, you can see that they're still beginning to relate shapes in terms of their attributes and their properties so the next level in the Van Healy model is level two and it's informal deduction and this is when they start to see in depth more relationships between properties of a class of shapes so for example they could say that a square is a rectangle because it has all the properties of a rectangle and so they start using geometric definitions in this level and um, get more in depth with relationships between properties the next level after informal deduction is level three this is deduction it's usually reached in high school and this is when they go even more in depth and they think about properties of shapes even more and they can construct proofs at this at this level not just memorize them so an example of something that a student at level three deduction would say would be a circle's radius is perpendicular to the tangent it intersects because and so that's that level and then the last level in the Van Healy model is level four this is rigor and it's usually reached in the university or college level. So a couple important things we have to discuss when looking at the Van Healy model is that it is sequential, which just means we must go through the levels in order. So teaching, this is very important. You can't skip a level. You have to go through in order for students to understand. So advancement is the next key characteristic. And this just means that progress depends on the content, not the age of the student. So you could say that a child should be at a certain level in a certain grade or at a certain age but that's incorrect it doesn't go by age it just goes by where they are according to the content that they know and the final key property of the Van Healy model is mismatch and this just means that you must master one level before moving to the next so for example if a student had not mastered level zero visualization they would not be able to move on to analysis and so going back to it being sequential you have to go in order because once they memorize this then they can memorize this and so on so the first level that we're going to look at today is level zero visualization and we're going to look at a way we could support a student at this level and so this would be appropriate for probably kindergarten or first grade and I have this worksheet that would be really good for someone at a level zero it says how many squares can you find and so something like this would be good because we're saying what it looks like. So for example, a student could say if they were at level zero visualization, a square looks like this and they might draw it with their finger. Or another example would be a square looks like a window. So if given this worksheet, a way to support them would be having them find the shapes and they could say a square looks like a window. So I would have them outline the shape with the color so that I know they found it. So like I said, we're looking at visualization. So what does it look like? And if they can identify shapes in drawings or pictures. So we'll go for another example on this worksheet. And a student could say, if they were at level zero, a square looks like a present, because that's something they're usually familiar with. So I would have them outline the present. And as you can see, there are many examples of squares on here. They could have said, a square looks like a picture frame, they could have found all four different squares on here because they know what they look like visually. 
So that would be a good activity to support a learner that's at level zero for vis visualization. So the next supporting activity we're going to look at is for level one analysis. And there are a lot of different activities you can do to support level one, but the one I'm going to focus on is sorting and resorting shapes based on one attribute. So I have this pile of shapes here and we're going to look at how we can sort them. So I would give these to a level one student and have them sort them and maybe name some key attributes. So the first way I'm going to sort these, or I would have the student sort these, would be I'm looking at these shapes and I see that a couple of them have three sides. So I'm going to sort them by shapes that have three sides and shapes that do not. I think that's all of them. So here I have triangles and non-triangles and a level one student might say that these are triangles because they have three sides. So they've, sor they've sorted them by one characteristic, which would be that the shape has three sides. So to continue with this exercise and give them more support, um, you can have them resort the shapes according to another characteristic. We're still just looking for one characteristic. And um, first or second grade should be able to do this because they're working on classifying and sorting shapes at that age. So continuing with this exercise, we would resort them. So I'd have them mix them back up. And we're going to look at a new characteristic. So I could say, or the student could say, I'm going to sort them by shapes that have four sides. So let's go ahead and sort those. So to further support them, I had them resort and do it by another characteristic. So we're just looking at one characteristic. A level one student could say that they sorted them by four shapes with four sides and shapes with more or less than four sides. And a generalization they could make at this level would be that a quadrilateral has four sides.